No one accepted. Bitter Harry kept his head down in shame, skipping the cenotaph after booze. Funerals are famously never much fun, especially when you have to make nice with your estranged family members. But we have to imagine Queen Elizabeth's funeral has been a special kind of stressful for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, who are not only reunited with the rest of the family for extended bouts of time in a highly emotionally charged atmosphere, but they have to do it with the entire world scrutinising their every move. The unadorned garb Prince Harry was forced to wear during the service for Queen Elizabeth II at Westminster Hall was a reminder that he's departed the royal family in an official capacity. Because he is no longer a working royal, Harry has been told that he's not allowed to attend events in his military regalia. To many, Harry's body language served as another reminder of just how much his life has changed since he left the regimented world of being a working royal behind. Members of the royal family followed the Queen's coffin from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Hall for the lying in state ahead of Her Majesty's funeral on Monday. The Queen left Buckingham Palace for the final time at around 3pm on Wednesday, with the King and the royal family walking behind her coffin in solemn procession to the lying in state. King Charles III walked in line with the Princess Royal, the Duke of York and the Earl of Wessex, leading the royal family behind the late Queen Elizabeth II. Prince Harry and Prince Andrew have refrained from saluting the London War Memorial as the Queen's procession makes its way through the streets of central London. While royal family members raised their hand in salute as they made their way past the cenotaph, the Duke of Sussex opted instead to bow his head while the Duke of York simply turned his eyes to look at the memorial. The cenotaph, towards which Prince Andrew and then Prince Harry declined to salute during the procession, has become the central focus for national commemoration every year, most significantly during the National Service of Remembrance or Remembrance Sunday. One social media user noted, they're not in uniform or wearing headdress, he bowed his head instead, it was the correct thing to do. The royal family remained at Westminster Hall for a 20-minute service before exiting the building and being escorted off the premises. Footage of the service was shared on the official royal family YouTube account. Yet, during this process, all eyes are on Meghan, scrutinising her every move. This is stressful to say the least. Having been out of the royal spotlight for a while, Ponce suggests might mean the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are relying on each other a bit more than the rest of the firm at the moment. According to Jess Ponce III, holding hands is a sign of connection, intimacy and security. This is why parents hold children's hands when taking them to school for instance, and why lovers hold hands when they walk. Married couples hold hands for intimacy, but more so for emotional intimacy and connection, Ponce explains, it's a means of support. And Prince Harry and Meghan Markle could both definitely use that kind of support right now, when faced with a challenging situation such as a family death, holding hands provides all three, connection, intimacy and security. It is a way to support one another, says Ponce. This is the case Harry and Meghan, he points out. There is also another factor at play, the stress of being under the microscope. Harry has talked about holding his wife's hand when she needed support before, such as in a video interview circulating on social media recently, in which he describes squeezing each other's hands at a public event after Meghan had experienced a mental health crisis. 